Hello, everyone, and welcome to the HBL Gallery's Artist Talk series. My name is Jennifer, and I'm one of the curators for the Visual Arts Exhibitions Program at the Hoover Public Library. And today, I am so thrilled to introduce to you artist Harrison D. Walker. Today, Harrison is going to discuss his work and ongoing project portals, which is very interesting because it um, explores the materiality and convergence of photography, printmaking, and drawing, but it also exists starkly outside of those genres. So with that, I'll leave it there and turn it over to Harrison to introduce himself. Thank you so much for doing this, Harrison. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Um, so a quick quick intro, I guess, to just me as my background. Um, I grew up in Huntsville, just north of Birmingham. Um, and I spent all my early years there until I went to grad school. Uh, I went to grad school in Philadelphia. I lived there for two years. I studied in Maine uh, a year after that, working on historic process photography at Maine Media Workshops in college, um, and studied a lot of 19th century photographic processes. Uh, from there, I met my partner in Maine, and we moved to Georgia, where he went to grad school. Uh, and from there, I moved to Texas, which is where I am now, working at uh, Texas State in the digitization department at Alcock Library. Um, so I, it's, I've had a lot of different um, experiences within photography, and from the making to teaching to viewing and looking at it. And now I'm kind of in a, di a different aspect of photography of digitizing it for research, um, which has been a pretty cool experience. A lot of my work uh, kind of uses archival material and found appropriated imagery. And so that was kind of the impetus of me looking at this job as it combined these two areas I was interested in, archives and photography, uh, which I think kind of fuels my work. Um, I wanted to start by uh, sharing my screen and I'll share um, the series. Can you see that okay? Yep. So I just wanna read the artist statement and flip through the bulk of the series just so you can get an idea of what they look at look like. They're all very visually different and subtle, but also kind of the same. Um, so like I said, I grew up in Huntsville, Alabama, appropriately named the Rocket City because of its heavy NASA and military presence. Living in Huntsville, one learns to live with and even tune out the random constant house-shaking booms of rocket engines and bomb blasts resulting from tests conducted at nearby Redstone Arsenal. Huntsville's economy is heavily dependent on the military and its many con contractors, which call the city home. One also learns to live with alongside massive space shuttles and rockets, which have entered orbit and miraculously returned to Earth, of which there are many installed throughout the city, monuments to humankind's determination to defy gravity. Growing up surrounded by these visible and invisible forces instilled within me an unshakable fascination with space exploration and military strategies. Though I no longer live in Huntsville, I, I know doing so has shaped the work I've made and will continue to make for years to come. My studio practice is driven by an obsession with the intersections of printed objects, archives, chemistry, astronomy, and chance. Employing the visual alchemy of printmaking, photographic materials, and drawing, I create forms which evoke an experiential and emotional viewing experience, understood through the meditative act of looking. My work is rooted in, but not bound by, the limits of traditional representational photography, Though I make traditional images using a camera and source traditional images from public collections and archives, the resulting prints are often manipulated, fragmented, or otherwise reduced to raw materiality in the service of these ideas. As I learned growing up in Huntsville, absence of vision does not equal absence of sensation. In 2015, I began working on my current long-term project portals, a direct manifestation of these ideas. Portals is a series of print variations of a repeated circular form intended for display in large scale grids. Each portal is just a print on its own and relies on its siblings to suss out subtle similarities and differences. Displayed 70 strong on a wall and differences become overwhelming. Inspired by German romanticism, they invoke the sublime in the everyday. 
made possible by the chance discovery of an abandoned 20 inch steel disc, which I now use as a printing matrix. There are over 200 portals and counting. Each portal is made with the principle of the photogram and utilizes light and pressure in combination to create endless variations. Each sheet of paper is coated with an emulsion of varying composition, printed using photogram, monoprint, and collagraph techniques, drawn on and or physically altered to achieve each result. Similar to a Rorschach test, each unique installation of portals is intended to explore how the viewer perceives variations in texture, surface, color, image, and time. Many of the prints are coated with light sensitive material left unfixed before exhibition. Because of this, some prints will actively change color and tone over time. Its rate of change dependent upon environmental variables such as light, temperature, and humidity. As such, no installation of portals are alike. And like the water in a stream, no one installation of portals looks the same day after day. Needless to say, my practice is rooted in ideas of reper reproducibility. Much like Solowitz wall drawings, each portal can be re reproduced by any based on its set of instructions. As I create each portal, I also record the recipe used to achieve each unique result. These recipes are compiled in a portal instruction manual, an ongoing publication printed in iterations as I continue to create new prints in the series. My practice tends to feed itself in a cyclical way, each piece leading to the next. First, I create a portal to investig investigate a material concern, yielding a physical provocation of perception. This leads further to the creation or discovery of new or new to me archival imagery, which relates back to the portal's unique visual qualities. Inevitably digging through archival documents and making photographs re-inspires a search for the next portal. My studio is full of echoes. It is from this point where I develop new work and continue investigating the intersections of printed objects, archives, chem chemistry, astronomy, and chance. So as I flip through these, you can see how there is a one constant, that is the circle. Uh, and it's the form of the circle that I use sort of as the baseline of the series and the kind of initial um, desire was to see how these 19th century photographic processes like cyanotype, Van Dyke Brown, gum bichromate, salt printing, uh, et cetera, can be used to achieve a variety of visual results. Um, and a lot of them might look very similar and a lot of them will look very different. And a lot of them use the exact same components. So it's these kinds of different interactions based on exposure, based on density of the chemistry, based on where I am, whether that be Maine, Georgia, Philadelphia, or Texas, that all have an impact on these materials that I am interested in exploring. Um, and it, it came to me that each one of these is kind of simple on its own and I think can probably stand on its own. But once you start to look at them in a grid, you, you get a different feeling of the work and um, you really start to notice differences and similarities within the two. So a few installation shots. So you can get an idea of how they sort of exist in the space. Viewing them on the screen is very different than viewing them in the space, obviously. So each print is 22 by 30. Um, and they're usually hung in some form of grid. Uh, and one thing that I am really interested with this work is uh, I've never hung the exact same installation twice. Um, and so there's about 200 prints in the series so far with some sitting right next to me in the studio being waited on to work on. But uh, with this idea that, that this, these prints are evolving, always changing, whether they're changing because of what they're in relation to next to each other, or maybe the chemistry on the page itself is actually changing. Um, so in this exhibition, we have, so this print right here is made of cyanotype and Van Dyke Brown. 
and um, it was exposed but not processed all the way. And so throughout the exhibition, the center of the circle would get darker, the lighter outside of the circle would, would get lighter. Um, and so not every print changes, but, but it's interesting to me to, for a viewer to maybe walk into a space one day, see it in one iteration, and then the next day be able to see subtle differences. So these are um, in Richmond, Virginia at Candela Gallery. You'll notice that often a lot of each print um, is maybe initially subjectless. And when I first started the series, I was trying to fit more representational image into these. And it just so often felt like it didn't work. And I uh, became more drawn to sort of the emptiness of these that then the color, the texture, the surface of the page is kind of what started to make the image. Um, whether that's marks on the page from processing, uh, marks on the page from a brush stroke, or the way a, a particular chemical interacted with another. Um, and it was this kind of sense of awe and um, visual calmness in a way that that led me to want to keep some of these images. So you'll you often see this image of the Cliffs of Dover, um, which is actually an image my granddad took in World War II. Um, and so using a few of these images that I found both in my personal archive, but also in public archive that are kind of re re reoccurring images that don't necessarily speak to anything specific, but speak to kind of a feeling or an idea. Uh, a lot of each variation is highly dependent on the process of making itself and responding to what just happened in front of me. Um, so probably nine times out of 10, each print will start out with coating a sheet of paper with cyanotype, which you might associate with something like an architectural blueprint. Um, not quite the exact same process, but very similar. And so these here um, started out with, I should reference this disc behind me. So this is the actual plate that is used to create each print. Um, and it's made of steel, I believe. And so these prints started out with me wetting a sheet of paper and allowing the disc to physically sit on the paper and rust. And so rust is a, is a product of iron. Iron is a product of rust, and iron is also a component in cyanotype, ferric ammonium citrate, potassium ferrocyanide. And so I was interested to see what those two chemicals of, or different types of iron would kind of react to together. So these are a series of rust prints coated with cyanotype. So the range of kind of what material I will be willing to use in a piece is kind of limitless in a way. Another way that process feeds um, the series is that, you know, often I'll do one thing to one print and then do the exact opposite to the next print. So here I'll, I've coated each sheet of paper with Van Dyke Brown, which is a silver based photo print process. Um, I laid the disc on the page, I allowed it to, to expose, and I washed, that would be the one on the left. The one on the right uses a stencil made from the plate, which is exposing the opposite. So it was a very simple gesture with a pretty cool outcome. This is an installation at Trax Visual Arts Center in Lake City, South Carolina. This is at Corey Daniels Gallery in Wells, Maine. And this is the first gallery that actually started showing this work um, in 2017.
So the image on the right here is the is actually technically portal 34, but is the first portal I actually ever made. It just sat on a shelf long enough to where I ended up making many more until I decided, oh, this is actually a series. Um, so this image on the right is a composite of the four different images that my grandfather took again in World War II um, of soldiers and of crowds looking on. And so uh, just the crowd is like three different images and then this back here is another image. Uh, but this idea of kind of reappropriating images and looking back into time and thinking about what, what these people were seeing and how they were feeling. This is an image at the University of Georgia. So this, this installation is one of the largest that I have to date and is where I really started pushing this idea of having prints change over time. And so this, this installation has several prints of which I just coded and hung up on the wall and allowed the light to expose it over time. And it was up for uh, about a whole semester. So it really had time to shift. And there were some that, that didn't do very much that I thought they were and some that really changed more than I thought they would. Um, so that was a pretty neat experience to be able to have the opportunity to put up work for an extended period of time and really, really test that idea out. And then this is actually the first iteration of portals that I installed. Um, and the last one I'll show you. And it was in 2016. It was actually my MFA thesis show. Um, and 59 variations of the print plus the disc hung on the wall as the 60th position of the grid to reference how they were made. And then these are four of some of the newest ones that I've made. Uh, and they take just exposed sheets of paper and they're layered upon one another uh, to create the, the visual irregularities within the circle. And that's, I think that's all I have for you. Did you have some questions for me? Sorry about that, I was muted. Um, I mean, in viewing your work, I'm struck by the long dedication to subject matter. Um, at, for the moment, at least, you seem very steadfast in this um, zone of ex exploration. Um, and I'm wondering if you discuss your thoughts on repetition labor intensive studies and why following an acute focus is a methodology that you subscribe to as an artist. For instance, I mean, some artists work um, in a very um, methodical, dedicated way where all of their work is an exploration of one specific idea and then other artists are constantly changing and bringing in new imagery into their work. So, um, I was curious of your thoughts on that. I think a lot of it had to do with the object itself. And so um, when the series started, I literally came across, there's actually two of them. And it's a steel disc, heavy, large, what is it? No one knew. But so I came across it in grad school and in grad school, you experiment, right? And so I was thinking it actually sat in my studio for months trying to figure out what am I gonna do with this? I have to do something with this, these are cool. Um, and so, you know, I just made a simple photogram with cyanotype and just simply coded the sheet with cyanotype, exposed it and was like, all right. And from there, it really got me thinking about the idea of presence and absence and how I can use that disc to explore that idea visually, using the disc to obscure the light from exposing a chemistry or using the disc to apply um, an ink or a substance to the disc. Um, 
but then going back to the disc, I realized that I was really interested in comparing and comparing what one portal looked like next to another. And when, when you switch them out, what is, how does that change your vision of it? Um, and so it kind of feels like a constant to me in a way, something I can always go back to, uh, a form that I feel comfortable working with visually and physically, um, kind of a, a language that I'm building in a way um, based on this kind of constant circular form. And so I think for me, a lot of it has to do with less about figuring out what is the next image, but sort of what is the next combination? Um, how can I achieve something that I haven't seen? Or how can I respond to something that I've made previously to take it somewhere new? And I think that that's what um, deep explorations are kind of all about is like finding how much variety you can introduce without introducing any variety. Totally. Um, I was also curious to know if, and this is a little bit of an abstract question, but if you detect shifts in yourself as the apparatus that um, is producing a very specific set of objects. Hmm. And if you don't have an answer to that, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that is that I have noticed is that in terms of like me being the variable, I guess that's kind of what you're talking mm -hmm. about is, um, you know, the past five years or so, I, you know, I haven't lived anywhere for longer than a two years max. And so that being a variable of being in a different geographic location is definitely part of it. But I've noticed in myself, I'll get hung up on like, I did a residency in Macon, Georgia, and I just kind of was really hung up on getting this like black on black and so I'll, I'll kind of go down a rabbit hole of a specific material or a specific desire to achieve a particular result. And then, and in trying to get that result, I usually come up with like seven other results that are fine, but not what I was looking for. And so that kind of desire and search, I think is really what feeds a lot of this creation. I think one thing that's interesting to note is that Believe it or not, I have never thrown one of these away. I have always worked on it until I was satisfied with it. So whether that's, you know, some of these may have nine, 11 layers of components, drawing, chemical, pho photographic process, etching ink, whatever it is. But it, there's something about it that, that I don't want to just give up on any of them that I know I eventually can manipulate it in a way that I will be satisfied with it. And so there's kind of that desire of, of assessing it and determining what do I like about this? What do I not like about it? And then trying to, to, to solve the problem of how do I make this something I like again? So that's a very kind of constant motivating factor. That's interesting. I mean, you're, really almost a painter in essence because you're reworking a canvas um so you're kind of like in that genre and medium too so i didn't know that they were reworked in that way or that you there was a constant like lifespan of them yeah i was just like a one shot you know um it's it's, it's i mean some of them are like okay one impression and okay that turned out great I'll move on but there's a lot that that's not the case you know it'll sit in my studio for a couple months or some of them i'll coat with an emulsion and then let expose in my studio for a couple months um and then return to it and make it make an assessment mm -hmm. um i think that the root of that question lies within uh, my interest in barb bondy's work who i'm gonna um do an artist talk with next and she is she was doing um, this study where she would, she teaches at Auburn and she teaches drawing and um, she partnered with a neuroscientist and they scanned students' brains um, as they like took a semester of drawing class. Hmm. And so, and so they watched the brain develop um, as a result of the practice of drawing. Wow. 
yeah it was huh. and your work is it's cyclical it's i mean the sphere is like an eyeball i mean you really reference like um your interest in the cosmos too and our interaction with that as human species so it's like I, I wonder if that sphere has like entered your brain in this way that's like manipulating it subtly in this very meditative way well and i mean you think about the number of times that i've looked at a circle on a rectangular page it's like it's become this familiar thing that <laughs> yeah mm -hmm probably ingrained in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about the um, moment of discovery. You did a little bit already, but like the evolution of this project, um, a little bit more in depth than you did. Um, what was your work like before this? So kind of interesting. I would say my work before this was a series of one-off pieces where it's like, you know, it, it was very rooted in appropriating found imagery and um, mainly family found imagery um, and manipulating that in Photoshop and creating kind of a composite image and um, using some of these processes to create a print. Um, but I, I feel like, I think part of why I'm drawn to the series is because I, I sort of felt lost in a way, in, in a way that I couldn't quite pinpoint what I wanted to make until I found this. And then I, it feel, feels like kind of limitless options and kind of a baseline that just, I don't know exactly what it is, but it just, it's like, it's been five years in the making and two years into it, I was like, surely I'll be done with this soon. <laughs> and it's like every day I wake up and I'm like, nope, I'm, I have a desire to make these. And in this new job and COVID especially is, you know, production has been wildly less than I would like it to be. And so there's, it's interesting that there's still this drive, like I'm itching to make some of these, um, which feels really exciting. But to circle back, I mean, I, I think a lot of my work was sort of autobiographical in a way um, before this. And I, I struggle to kind of pinpoint exactly, like it's not, it's not it wasn't all just, a, it wasn't a series. I didn't work serially in that way. Um, they all kind of spoke to different ideas, I guess. And this to me feels like you know, each print is successively working off of the next. Great. Well, I'm going to bring us forward to the foreground and thank you for doing this. Um, it's been really, really enjoyable. Like your work is um, really interesting to me because it does kind of like um, reject photography too, but still is super interested in what photography has to offer while like abandoning the negative and the camera altogether. So it's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, well, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Harrison. Thank you. Thank you.